So this is, we are beginning chat on the mat. Yes, our okay. first episode now. So chat on the mat is a, is a great concept in a way that, you know, whatever I am and I do, I live, I study, I studied and I'm researching every day and I observe every day how I can bring it here from time to time and give a direction to this project, chat on the mat. So that way everybody can pick something for themselves in their yoga journey, in their life journey, whatever they are doing, wherever they are living, whether they are practicing yoga or not, but something inspired them to know a little bit more about it. So let's make a chat on the mat. Like, or people think like this, like, like this. This is the way we live. This is the way we think. This is a conscious and sustainable way. Because when the humanity and the human are sane, the earth will take care of itself. You know, we don't have to be some sort of a hero to save the planet Earth. We just got to work on ourselves first. It's never external. It's always internal work that brings self-growth. We focus on those kind of topics from, from, the, from the perspective of science, from the perspective of history in its original sense, in philosophy, in applied sciences, in comparison and contrast, because that gives people a very good idea. Mm. It means nobody is better than the other, but just the comparison and the contrast. So the people can just be figuring out, oh, these are the differences. And so not everything is one box and you fit everything into that. Diversity in the thought processes and the origin of thoughts matter. Whether it be the topic on spirituality, medicine, way of life, their evolved and developed philosophy and ideology. People who are listening, let them choose what they want to choose. Okay, it matters. People who are listening, they are listening our conversation. That's why it's chat on mat. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's start. Very nice. Thank you for the introductory on that mm. on that matter so what you were mentioning you were mentioning on saving this planet earth which is a huge thing where i see that more and more awareness arises in many different groups of people that that's a necessity that we need to take action on that and you also mentioned the fact that the root is to empower ourselves what, where the, the other thing will be natural consequence then. So, what is your method? What would you say is the way of self-empowerment? Shortly summarized, maybe. One need to develop a habit to read, dig, kind of like, you know, when they are practicing something for their mind body there's a philosophy behind it and when they get curious about it what they are doing wow it's really helping me you know i feel very good i feel like very much in tune myself then you're like let's dive to find out what is the philosophy behind it because only then you you're going to learn the art and the science of what you are doing, not exercises, but a practice, mm -hmm. a dedicated 
practice for your mind, for your body, for your soul. And that exercise, for example, that builds the bridge towards yoga as a means for that act, that method, so to speak. Now, that's a big word, yoga, which I see also is used in many different ways, many different contexts. Yeah? And um, so, bring light into that. What is yoga? What does yoga really mean? What's the background? What's the root? What's the history behind that? History is quite old. But what we can really talk about is that what is how you can apply it to live a better life. You know, that's immediately, it can be understood by the people. But, and the big but is, asana is not yoga fully. It is one limb of it, one part of it. It's a one-eighth of yoga as per Sage Patanjali. Mm. Now, here is something very less people know. Sage Patanjali is not the only one who are bring, who is bringing the word Ashtanga. There are eight Lakshmi, Ashta Lakshmi. There are Ashta Bharav, eight Bharav. There are so many examples of Ashta. So the principle of eight, you know, I talked to you earlier, mathematics. The universe can be understood with mathematics, with numbers from zero to nine. And everything that is happening in between it, it's not binary. It's not something like a linear from one to two, two to three, three, some, so much more happening in between than all the equations and everything about mathematics. It's like between zero to nine. That's a very interesting. <laughs> maybe, maybe a big topic for another, mm -hmm. another. Yeah, it's time. it's crazy. Like about. you know, the, what what can be talked, what could be shared, yeah. and uh, there are so many topics. Yes. And I think the most interesting topic to start with, maybe like you know, you can choose which would you like. If Patanjali Yoga Sutra, mm. you can you can also think about about Bhagavad Gita. Mm. You can also think about uh, something on Kama Sutra. Mm. You can also some. You can also think about something about Nath Yogi. You can also think about something about uh, Sanatan Dharma, the way of life, mm. according to the Hindu people, the land of Hindu, Hindu. No? That's good. Yeah. We all of these are uh, very, very interesting, amazing topics. I would say for the moment right now, let's dive into Patanjali and his Yoga Sutras. As you already have mentioned it, mm -hmm. you mentioned Ashtanga, you mentioned mm -hmm. Asana. Mm -hmm. For maybe people who do not know what Asana is, it's you know, the physical part of the practice, what usually is labeled as Yoga. That's what I um, mean by one of the observations that I made, that many people automatically default to Yoga as some kind of sports, fitness, gymnastic style, which is just not it, yeah. And so, yeah, bring us to, bring light to the, to the Patanjali, to Patanjali, who was he? What was his work? What's the Yoga Sutras? What's the background of that as well? So many people say so many things, that who is Patanjali actually? To simplify it, you can, you can, visualize, you can imagine. Patanjali is a, is a sage, is a scientist that who is understanding that how the people that who are now civilized or will be civilized in the future, they can live a sane and a holistic life working on their mind, body and soul. So they stay sane and they, they prosper, they realize themselves they live in harmony with the nature, they, they benefit, they share, they truly know what is love, they trust, they honor, so the whole world it can sustain for better. That, that must be his intention, mm -hmm. you know, a 
kind of a psychologist that who is thinking so big and deep as well and deep big deep like yes. from all all 10 dimensions and the unknown dimension like from that a totally holistic point of mm. view and he come to this this nectar this juice of everything that he bring it forward in terms of the sutras in terms of the formulas mm. 196 they are divided in four and first part itself is just like boom like a trailer with everything you mm. know as like the movie trailer in the trailer you get most of the movie mm. that that is all already in the samadhi pad mm-hmm. samadhi pad maybe you can you can explain a little bit of what the topic means and then we can go into vaguely at least into the content of the samadhi pad and the three other parts as well how the sage patanjali a great great scientist maybe a social scientist but in a holistic way psychologist a socialist you know, social scientists actually are are very they can be very 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 good psychologists and i think they are because they are understanding the kind of a behavior of the human as a society mm-hmm. yeah. so that's i think it's very when we can imagine we can think that way you know that's mm-hmm. that's big so he opens up the argument atha yoga anushasanam from here let's focus on yoga so that's the that's the introduction so yeah. to speak yeah and he say yoga anushasanam yoga as a discipline mm. yoga as a formula mm-hmm. yoga as a track hmm? what is a track it is a sort of a discipline that tracks are parallel everywhere every time mm-hmm. no matter what because only then the the tram can go safely mm. so it's 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 a kind of a clear practically applicable formula so to speak you could say mm. so it's it's opening up the argument mm-hmm. yoga as a discipline mm. and here it is the second verse goes like this which is so powerful and and because it's so like you know it's there it's right there in in front of the study uh, people just only know that and they only talk of, like it only show this like you know one verse of the yeah. 196 yeah <laughs> okay yeah. yeah this this is this this is a sad story behind yeah. the, this all modern yoga scene Mm. like people don't know you know and that's why i think everything is going downhill the first verse that opens up after after patanjali is saying yeah pay attention from here on we are talking about the discipline of yoga atha yoga anushasanam the second goes like this yoga chitta vritti nirodha mm mm-hmm. I, I like the it. full argument is right on the face there. Mm-hmm. So imagine a scientist how they are going to talk. They will put a topic first, mm-hmm. then they will give their reasoning why it is so. That's a an amazing way of looking at it. Yeah. Can you imagine like you know what kind of a level uh, like uh, Sage 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 Patanjali was at? Uh, I think it's. If you're not not there yet, it's very difficult to even remotely imagine yeah. on what kind of of, of yeah. a being he was and what which heights he had had reached. We were talking about this previously as well. You were also sharing with me that in each of these, so basically he was breaking down this whole huge complex science, um, which has so many dimensions to it. into this 196 verses and he was he was just nailing it so to speak it was spot on so every single verse has as you mentioned has so many different dimensions into it and um yeah that's that's that just gives you kind of a a grasp i would mm-hmm. say mm-hmm. on what's really behind the scenes 
going on mm. on someone like Patanjali. Mm. So let's not go, not get off track, but I think for for in, intersecting here, it might be interesting to also question for whom then is the Yoga Sutra originally thought to be. So for those people, is it for the for the let's say normal people who study it by themselves, or is it for the for the yoga masters who study it and use it as a kind of a threat, as an orientation to share with their students? Mm. Who is the yoga master? I would say someone who has um, reached a certain level of mastery over his whole faculties. Mm and is now able to share that with other people in a proper way. That is a good definition. So imagine how hard it is to find the master. In, now, in, in today's world, more than ever before, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so then imagine how hard it is to find, uh, find a guru. Hmm. Like a true master. That's very interesting what you're differentiating. I think it's also good to know the difference between what is a yoga master and what is a guru. Mm. Uh, yeah. Because what I also see often, people have no idea what guru means. I often see that many people think guru is a teacher, simply, mm. for example. A teacher is a teacher that who know the technique and able to teach it transmitted. That is a teacher. But a guru is the guru that who is transferring the energy of his acquired wisdom with his sadhana in you to infuse you, to light you. That is a guru. Okay. And the teacher, teacher cannot be a guru, and the guru cannot be a teacher. Guru is guru. Same way, a guru and a master are different. So you differentiate the Guru between. is guru, but the master is a master that who know why that technique, mm. to whom that technique. Mm -hmm. And so much wisdom, mm. but in not in comparison with the guru. Mm -hmm. Guru is the guru. Mm. So it's like levels. Yeah, you can say. So now that student who is learning from a teacher or from from a master, now they are on a journey. If they want to become the master or they, how they can also have their journey. Mm -hmm. They can be also reached even higher than the Guru. They become the Guru of the Guru. So age play no role here. So teacher is teacher, master is master, mm -hmm. and Guru is the Guru. Mm -hmm. So if I got it right to maybe classify it a little bit, mm -hmm. it's like levels more or less, right? So the teacher is there, he knows certain things. The master is on a different level than the teacher with more experience also, practical experience by himself and wisdom. And the guru is more on more subtle dimensions altogether, beyond, beyond mere techniques, beyond mere uh, yes. knowledge, beyond mere all that. Yeah, mm. Mm. got it. Okay. So that is very important to know. Because so, when you don't know that, people mix up the idea, they, they mix up the concept mm -hmm. and they, they just uh, are drive by the narratives. Those are infused and spoon-fed them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's what happens everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So I think this is also very well, valuable work that we are doing yeah. here in that context. So to come back to the question, so what do you think then? The Yoga Sutras from Patanjali, they are Certainly not for ordinary students, just for themselves, because they will not understand, right? Well, this is, this is like, it, it, it is like that. Uh, a kindergarten kid 
cannot understand a five grade textbook mm. in any topic whatsoever. Mm. They will just play with the pages, make some planes from it, doing this as well. So same way as well that it require a certain receptivity. Like, you know, whatever is your receptivity, you should only get that much because everything else is going to spill. Mm. And the person applying the principle, the art and the science of yoga can work on the receptivity. So, so they start to vibrate on the higher vibrational state. They get better and better and better and better and better. And they get like, you know, very, very good. From that angle, whatever they do, everything works out for them. Whatever they want, it happens. Whatever they want to achieve in their life, they achieve. Yeah, because they have been on a journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they also open a new, very interesting um, discrimination between knowledge and receptivity. So it is more, yoga is more about increasing your receptivity, mm. your perception, yeah. than to gain textbook knowledge. Of course, both things go together as well, to some degree, right? But it's about the recept receptivity. You were making a very beautiful metaphor on that, but, which is very simple, but so good to understand. You were you was always telling, I cannot fill a latte in an espresso cup. It's similar, it's like that. Right? That's, that's how you can imagine what receptivity is, what perception is. So there are so many things to explore now. I would like to get a bit back on the, on, the, on the second sutra that we want to explore. So you just recited it in Sanskrit language. Maybe you can give a, give a sort of translation and what that means, what Patanjali wants to say with this second sutra. What you mentioned that this is the Sutra that usually in yoga studios gets uh, spins, uh, modern yoga studios usually completely spin around this only single sutra. So they are a little bit, many of them might be a bit, uh, don't want to attack or insult anybody here. But like the kindergarten child that you just mentioned in that context. But this is the most important sutra. Mm. Yoga Chitta Vritta. Nirodaha Yoga Chit Vritti Nirodaha hmm. Yoga removes the fluctuations of the mind, body, and soul. Hmm. In Sanskrit, the meaning will be manas. Mm -hmm. this holistic you that is behind the physical your nervous system your hormonal system your your structures your muscles your nerves your brain your glands your organs your bones your marrow your sperm or your egg your ovary and going subtle, 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 very deep to the cell, to the molecule, behind the molecule, subatomic, where these particles are just entangled. It, it, it can go that deep on the micro level. On the macro level, just the opposite. It can expand so much. And that is possible with yoga and when yoga is applied in the proper way this is for sure the self actualization comes mm -hmm. not self realization self actualization mm -hmm. self realization can only come by the grace of the guru <laughs> So there's two different things between self-realization yeah. and self-actualization. Yeah. So self-actualization is more about mastering the reality you're living in, being the creator of it. Yeah, being and you, true you. Mm. 
and self-realization is reaching the core of that what is. Yeah. Mm. So basically, this is it. And Patanjali put light on many interesting topic. Mm. And, uh, and the Greeks adopted Arab, adopted it because of the train mm -hmm. and because of this knowledge exchange with Greece and, and all that. But it got diluted and mixed up with misconceptions. It came to the West, it's still there. That's how, how the psychology evolved actually. The study of the mind mm -hmm. beyond the physical. But because of the religious, Western, Ibrahimic, religious constraints, uh, they never had this liberated and the holistic approach of mm -hmm. the psychology, which is really missing in this modern age. And it's so much needed. So then applying that, the, everything and everyone is going to, is going to prosper more more prosperity will come religions will have a chance to rejuvenate themselves in a very good way and the humanity can sustain and get better exactly. instead of all the propagandas all this ideology and divide and rule yeah. and something like this you know we just learn we start to learn this idea of mutual respect mm -hmm not that hard but it's not wanted because nobody told it's like normal at the moment nobody is there to set up something to tell this is not normal this can be maybe normal let's try that way yeah you know instead of isms like you know mm -hmm. yeah women want to be like man for example I mean no women just got to be themselves true selves and that, that is possible with yoga. Men, whoever they want, like, you know, whatever they think they are, they start from there and really find out who they really are. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that inclusive. Yeah. And that is why yoga is loved everywhere. People don't know so much about it, but, but they have a feeling about it, that it's something real. Mm -hmm. Yeah something really real that's that's I think it's we got to think in that way that when we talk about it, about the Patanjali Yoga Sutra we don't even just go verse by verse but we take topics from it mm. when we take the topics from it then the more jewels come out mm. yeah it's not like robotic uh, yeah, translations yeah that's not gonna bring so much but what can bring really good for the people to enjoy, like having their juice, mm. listening exactly. to the chat on the mat in their car when mm. they are going to work or they are coming back from the work or in the daytime when they are having their coffee or they are going for lunch mm. or they are just walking, they are able to enjoy something, something meaningful, something holistic, something real, something like, wow, this is something, help them in their personal growth, in their self-growth. Yeah. And really bringing a balance, like, you know. And that's, that's, that's how we got to think a little bit. Yeah, so there are many things in Patanjali Yoga Sutra. Marvin, let me tell you this. Who is Patanjali? So Patanjali, Sage Patanjali is the incarnation of Sheshnag. Shesh Nag is the Nag on that Vishnu lay and rest in Yoga Nidra. So it is said that Shesh Nag is so loving to Vishnu, took the incarnation of Shesh Patanjali and gave humanity Yoga Sutra. So when Bhagwan Vishnu comes, and find out that and follow that, they very quickly reach to the self-realization and come back to his award because he will really miss him. This is a devotion behind the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. Mm. Devotion. Mm. 
And that is what Sanatan Dharma is about. Devotion. This mutual love. This mutual respect. Yeah. So, plus duties, obligations. You know, and that is all so beautifully explained in Puranas. Mm -hmm. Puranas are just built to let the normal humankind know the essence of Vedas in a simple form. Because Vedas are very high level knowledge, require many, many, many years to really understand one verse, one suktam, one shloka, full lifetime. So that's why to help the normal people, stories were built and developed not only stories, but the story based on what happened. Mm -hmm. It's like that hundred years ago, it will be known through yoga and something happened, this happened, this. They're now they don't know every one hour by hour thing of me. Maybe like because of the digital things, maybe it is, but that will be it. Then, then, then it, it will be known that, okay, that person evolved that way and had happened this way, this way, mm -hmm. but that's a story, right? Yeah. The so same way as well, the Purana, all the records, what had happened, which is like prehistory mm -hmm. and recorded. Mm -hmm. yeah. So then Itihas come. Itihas is like Mahabharat, Ramayan. These are the Itihas as what happened. They're not epic or stories like this Western word, do not fit to that, the Indian way of. Uh, recording things. Recording the great example I tell you, now still as a, as a, like I live in the north, if I go in the south India to Rameshwaram, one of the Jyotirling, there are Brahman who are sitting. You go to them and they ask, okay sir, you want to do a puja? You know? And then you say yes, then they will ask you, what is your full name? Where you are coming from? Then they know that, oh, that is a Brahman over there. He takes care of the people from this area. You go there, you say your name, you say your father's name, you say where you live. He will find in his record mm. that who, was, who were your previous family member who came there and, and did a puja. This is the level of a record keeping. And it's not just one example, there are countless examples like this, wow. even in my family. Wow. Yeah. So this is how the tracking of the people, that micro level, was done back in the time across the devotion, across the way of life, harmony, love, compassion. Everybody has their own duty. Everybody will do the Purusharth according to their ability. As I, as I mentioned in the morning, not you have to, but you want to, because mm -hmm. the, this is your way of life. This is your way to devote to the Supreme, to Parmeshwar, to Yogeshwar, to Vishwanath. Ah, that was a... To the Father. You know, yeah. very, very huge, interesting uh, diving into the deeper background of, of yeah. all of that. Uh, so basically, you were also mentioning um, Patanjali, who took this birth in, uh, in his pure devotion to humanity so to speak, to fulfill this work that he assigned himself to do and to really make the world benefit from it. Special, specifically, you mentioned in times as we are today in the modern world, it's more needed probably than, than ever, you, one could say. And there's, there's, especially in the modern world, there's so many, so many complex histor history and layers and layers and layers of all that stuff, which as a consequence, lead to the things you have, uh, you have mentioned. For example, like this, women want to be women, uh, like men because they were, for a long time, they were like kind of suppressed and 
then they were told to be like this and teach taught to be like this more and more. So what we see is <clears throat> with all the measurements and the new things we try in the modern world to try to to do to establish new rules, new they are all cosmetic. It's like we're trying to cleanse the floor in front of us while at the same time continuously leaking new bin from behind. So yoga goes way more into the detail, to the source of things, not just merely on the surface, but really on the core. Now, referring to modern Western way of psychology, what would you, your major, one major takeaway be for Western psychology to immediately be able to reach maybe a new, new, new insights, new level through what Patanjali has written in the Yoga Sutras. Which thing, which bridge do you think is imminent and is there to really reach the next level of uh -huh, of realizations? Mm -hmm. It's very good what they're doing now, mostly <laughs> uh, as a normal practice. It's about chat, you have a chit chat and uh, all, one person talk, other person just sit and listen. Or something like this at the moment, right? This is a normal, okay? But how about now, not just talking in the beginning, talking is a kind of uh, yeah, report building and just understanding what that person is going through and this, that. But that, how about the psychologists also get a training with us in the Institute for Balanced Life, where they learn that how the asana play important role, which is, we term it under balance, applying the true yoga methods, balance, mental health, and unlocking a soulful living. You know, they can come to us, they can learn from us, and they can bring it for their patients, their clients. Mm. So that way really their work start to shine. Mm. They start to just get better and better with their practice. So they are satisfied in what they are doing. Mm. So this holistic approach yeah, that you have mentioned. Approach. Yeah, that's um, the way. That is the way. Yeah. It has to be done in the proper organized way and that is why Institute for Balanced Life is so important mm. It's not just about the corporate uh, training and all. It's about to really empower the mental health ecosystem mm -hmm. so they can really, really benefit and nourish. And like, you know, we can guarantee you the True Yoga Method works and we are ready to teach you that certify you in that. There's evidence that it works, to mention. It works. Enough. You see, like, you know, how, how, how people are really benefiting. Yes. So, yeah, this is, this is uh, I think, uh, yeah, Patanjali Yoga Sutra, it, it can be explained in so many ways. It's totally applied science. And when you're artistic about it, it's even better. Then you're, you're taking the best out uh, for your mind, body, soul. Mm. And, and it's incredible that how deep it can go. It goes up to what is Kevalya, what is balance, Samyak. Like, you know, when the state of this balance comes, that you're not right there, not there, you're just centered. This, you know, and what is Kevalya, what is Ishwar, what is surrender and devotion, mm. you know, and, and, and like, what is, what is visualization, mm. What is breath? Yeah. What is asana? What are ethics? Because without ethics, yoga is not possible. Without ethics, no, 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 no. Yoga is not fucking possible. Mm. Ethics, yam and niyam. Without you, that, yoga is not possible. You are here mentioning many very important integral things. And also here, it goes as for everything else. As an example, the Yoga Sutra that we have mentioned. Every single thing that you mention here, it has so many dimensions, it has so, many, so much depth into it that 
what I see, for example, the words that you speak right now. Usually they get used in a superficial, very superficial context, in a very shallow context. And people don't have any real understanding on, on re what really these things mean. Mm. Right? So maybe you can, you can clarify that a little bit more that there's much more to it than just the word, what you, what mm. you think about the word. Because in the end, what happens, you will always interpret what you say, I will always interpret it based on my level of experience. And that's maybe something we should also mention for people who listen to this, for example, that what you think to understand is not what you really understand, what, what really is how it is, so not, but, but more <laughs> it's on your current level, on what you think to know, so to speak. How to say the same thing in German? In slow. The same thing in German? Yeah. Wow. You mean, also, <coughs> das, das, was du glaubst zu wissen, oder das, was du verstehst, immer nur auf Basis von deinem aktuellen Stand, deinem aktuellen, man könnte sagen, Wissensstand ist vielleicht ein wenig zu eng gegriffen, von deinem, deinem aktuellen Erfahrungsstand ausgehend ist. Und, ähm, das ist ein dynamischer Prozess. It's a dynamic process. Hence, maybe one, one, one core message I can extract from this. That you never know even that what you think to know. Because what, whatever you know, it's always dynamic. There's always more to it. Always more behind it. It's a threat. It's an endless threat. Right? It is a process. It is never about the perfection. It is the process, it's never about the perfection. That is why ultimately you got to have the Guru who bring you beyond the practice. But still, it is a practice. And yesterday I sent you a voice message that you asked me again and again. What did you ask me? It was about uh, Mavata Babaji. So now you know it. Mm. What happened then? I mean, why? Like, what happened? It's okay. I'm, I'm, it's, I'm grateful. What? Still, I got to do the work. Yes. You know, it's not going to label me with anything special. Mm. It just make me f believe that what I'm doing, it is very important. It has to be done. And no matter what, it has to be done. All the challenges are going to come just to make you better. It has to be done. So, like, what, what is the point? So, labeling and everything, you know, that's what other dimension, what the Patanjali Yoga Sutra is about, about ego, about all the, all this, all the tendencies. Mm. What are the vrittis? What are the fluctuations, actually? Mm emotional, psychological, beyond the subconscious, to the supraconscious, to the paraconscious. Like, you know, why those are the tendencies which always bring you down. Mm. And then how to heal it, how to work on it and get better and better. Mm. So it's phenomenal that how, like, you know, it can be really applied applied science that is totally work on the mental health of the people in a very, very good way. So emotionally they get very intelligent, physically they get fit, health-wise they just like, you know, they are more stable, they're mm -hmm. more calm, they don't have back pain, they don't feel their, sh their shoulder tight, they don't feel lack of energy. Imagine how much time it saves the economy. So much time. And so much, like imagine everybody is benefiting with that. Yeah, and, and that's only one aspect, right? Yeah. The time of the economy, fine, good, but general quality of life of human beings, mm. what human beings can do, mm. what human, be, human beings more importantly can be, because what they do is a consequence of what they are, mm. right? That's, uh, there are endless possibilities. Endless. And to, to, I would like, like to come back to round up the, the 
idea that you brought for psychologists to come to balance life and to also underline something here, what, what I got from it, that if we look at it from, um, from the framework on how psycho usually modern Western psychology functions, it's a merely intellectual thing. I don't want to discredit it too much. It's merely philosophical. You might not even call it philosophical because there's the roots only reach so far. Mm. We have been talking about this in a, at another time. So it's very important to get at least an initial um, overview and touching point with the hol more holistic approach because you cannot separate psychology from philosophy. You cannot separate these two from biology, from physics, from, you know, all these things work together. Only if you know how all these things inter interact and interfere with each other, only then an holistic approach becomes even a possibility. I'm very excited for the future. The future is so bright, Marvin. Future is so bright. Mm. That is why I wear the glasses. <laughs> Even though it's not bright here, but the future is all, already <laughs> blending your eyes. <laughs> because I can see it. Yeah. Future is so bright. Yes. Yeah. That's another very important thing that you're mentioning here. This vision of the future. Installing that into human beings. Because what, what is your observation? What's your observation when you referring to, to that, that example with the vision yeah. and the bright light? And also, how do you think it would change if there was a bit more brightness, a bit more inspiration for the vision? So, what I see in people, right? What I see in people is this... Uh, a great opportunity that wow you know they can really do wonders mm. they really have to just unlock themselves and I'm so happy and I'm so grateful that I'm doing everything to make it happen for them for their betterment and through them the betterment of the society, of the humanity. Because it's not just about the planet, it's about the people that who are living on the planet. They should be also healthy, like yeah, mentally more able. Then, of course, the sustainability is just a byproduct of it. And so I see that in everybody. Everybody's so good, they're just traumatized. <laughs> I'm sorry to say, they are just traumatized and they're holding it unnecessarily with mm -hmm. them because they don't want to let it go because then they don't have a purpose left to act like certain way. Mm. And they're afraid to change. Mm. Yeah. And, and it can be unlocked without drama. You know, everybody will benefit from it. The countries, the world is going to prosper us with that. EU is going to get so much better. A great real example. Like how this is a future driven yeah, continent and the world can take example from it. And they truly apologize for what they have done to the world. And now they take it, take a charge in their hand to set a positive example. If they want to be a leader, as always, then they don't have to act. And they are naturally seen that way. Yoga, unlock it. And true yoga really, truly unlock it. <laughs> That's why it's true yoga. That's why it's true yoga. <laughs> it's a beautiful conclusion to to this. I, I think there's so much more that we will talk, talk about. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. It was a, a great pleasure. Yeah. So this was our first episode of Chairs on the Net and started as an inspiring conversation, I would say.
and uh, both of us are looking forward for further topics to come very soon and stay tuned we're looking forward till then namaste